Alright fellers, in my last uh, video I showed you how I do a muskrat and then I started babbling on about how I do all my uh, my land fur and I got that fisher the other day here so I'll give you a little quick demo on how I, I prep my fisher hopefully the camera picks all this up because I can't really see it the clamp is one foot, this is just a set of saw horses with a, a beaver board <coughs> on it um, I did sharpen up the, uh, the little skinning knives here, so I open them up. His vent is here. Can't tell if the camera's picking this up or not. Start at one ankle. When you pull, it creates this line right here on the belly side of the vent. So I just go in. Again, and watch your hands on the other side of this. Good sharp knife. Go straight across. To the other ankle. Now that that's done, I clamp both their feet, both hind feet, to the bench. Make a little incision about an inch away from the, the vent, half an inch, an inch away from the vent. Just a little sideways cut here down to the so you can see the tail and then I join up the marks so I go from the right side to the right side incision this knife still isn't that sharp left side to the left side and if you get it right your lines should line up just makes it look nice and then just like work the legs free um, Fisher Otter it's a little more knife work obviously more so than a mink or a rat or a marten okay I'm going to try to move this camera back right here. There. hopefully you guys can see that so I start roughly at the ankle, the knife I just pull the fur back, pull and cut the white, pull and cut the white. Until I can get enough meat or enough hide off that I can start working it out with my fingers. Otter you want to leave lots on or a bitch to scrape if you clean skin them. Fisher, I've never had an issue. Come up here to the belly, start getting that rolling. He's still partially frozen on the belly. And all I'm doing, I'm not worried about the fat, I just, just around the red meat. All his, uh, his muscle. This one was a small male. Those glands are right there. Beaver are nice to skin, especially the large ones when they're partially frozen. Open them up, work the leg free. Sure hope the camera's picking all of this up because I'm paying attention more to what I'm doing than the camera. Now I used to I used to just put his foot straight down and but I find when you pin them it creates a not a very nice edge. Does it matter? No, not really, it's just how I am with fur. So instead, I go down to roughly the ankle and then I just snip it off. And that's free. I work all the way to the base of the tail. So there, there's one side done. I'll flip them over here so hopefully the camera picks this up. 
has waited. Curly Beard is supposed to show up tonight. He wants to do that Lynx up. So I just take the knife. Again, I ain't worried about the fat. The fat flesh is off nice. Just basically the red meat. The red meat would flesh off nice too, but it gives you just a something to guide yourself with. This was the way that I was taught. I'm not sure how other people do it. But the procedure for just about every animal is the same except for the bigger ones. We don't have coyotes around here. So I can honestly say I've never skinned a coyote. And our wolves aren't like anything uh, in Alberta or whatnot. We have, we call them timber wolves, but they're not timber wolves. They're more of a brush wolf. They're a little smaller. So, just about every animal I do the same way, except for lynx and wolves. Lynx and wolves, I hang them by one leg. And then, uh, same procedure, but they're strung up by one leg. So again, I just go in, I cut her off 90, and that's it. Then I put them on the, the skinning gambrel. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, now that he's on the gambrel, I got the base of the tail all exposed. If the camera will pick that up, you can see my fingers. Base of the tail is exposed. I start just lightly tugging on it to make sure all the fat is off. Get it free so it's just the tail, there's no fat to touch the body. So there's the, the tail just totally exposed. There's no more fat from his vent area. Use a tail splitter. Smaller animals, uh, weasels, squirrels. I just use my fingernail. I dig my fingernail in. You want to pull on the base of the tail. You don't want to pull on the furry part of the tail. Slight like pressure. And pull. So what I did there, light pressure on the tail stripper, pull on the carcass. Don't pull with this hand, pull with this hand. Out comes the base of the tail. I don't like getting a tail in the face, so I cut the tail off. My first O2 it was hilarious. He'd get an otter tail in the face five or six times there before he learned to cut it off. That's pretty much it. I'll try and back this thing up so that you guys can get a full view of what I'm doing here. You can see I just got them strung up by one, but I'll hook them up on both. So he was already brushed, I already got the front feet nipped off. You've seen how I start them. Like I say, I start every animal that way. I mean, well, obviously except for beaver because they're, they're split open. The wolves and the lynx. The wolves and the lynx, I open them the same way, it's just I have one leg tied up. We might see that later on when Curly Beard gets here. and then. After that, it's just a matter of pull up. You want to grab as close to where the height is starting to roll as possible. Like I say, this guy's still hard to believe, but he's still partially frozen. So for you guys, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this or pick this up. You can see this real, real white area. That's the hide pulling off. So I was always taught pull and cut the white. It doesn't matter what animal you're doing, whether it's a beaver, a wolf, uh, whatever. Pull. 
If you nip that white, you'll never touch the hide. I'm trying to get them rolling enough so that I can just peel them right off. Oh, obviously this one's a male. There's one step I skipped there. And there. All the way down to the front legs. And then like I say, the procedure is the same. Whether it be for a marten, mink, weasel, whatever, whatever you have that's case skinned. I'm just working out as above the opposite side of the armpit till my finger pops through. And then I just pull. The camera will pick it up. So there's one leg. Same thing with the other leg. Poke it through and pull. Now, as far as the head goes, earbud here, earbud on the other side, just pull and cut the white, pull and cut the white. Nip your earbud close to the head, pull and cut the white. And there's the famous heater. You might want to take it easy. You nip one of these, you're going to have a mess. There's one on that side, one on the other side, well you can see them. And all I do, like I say, pull and cut the white, the eyes, I start a little back further. You got to get that little wee piece of cartilage right in the corner of the eye. Once you nip that, you're laughing. There's the lip. There's the younger brother. Can't even tell if I'm in focus or not. But the token. Shit. Did I leave the oven on? <laughs> you put those videos on uh, YouTube? Mm -hmm. Nice. You can edit them, right? Sometimes. Leave the shit. <laughs> Oops, sir. I get down to the mouth, I stick my finger in his mouth hole, work my way down to the nose. I don't, uh, I don't think I had ever heard that phrase, I stick my finger in the mouth hole and uh, watch a trap video. That's uh, another fish, right? That's like number five, I think. Six. Six? Oh, wow. Once you get to the nose, cut the nose off, and then I go straight on through, so they don't meet the bottom uh, the bottom lip. And there's our finished Fisher pelt. That took all of what ten minutes. And bait. All right, see you in a bit. All right, hope if I can fucking see. Yeah, don't judge me. So I started off a little knife work around the head down to the armpits. Again, don't judge me. And see, I'm consistent. I nicked it in the same spot on both sides. Once I get down below the uh, the front legs, then I switch over to the flesher.
fish are hard to do. It takes me about 30 minutes, I guess, to do a fisher. Worst part is just starting them off. Once they start rolling, it's no worse than an auger. Switch legs here. What were you up to there, Curly Beard? Taking a nap. I'm not gonna lie, I did that when I got home from work too. <laughs> Fucking passing out in my chair. Yeah. I didn't even know I was falling asleep until I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't those just the greatest? Yeah. Wake up dazed and confused and I was. Dan called me. Yeah, because I uh, <laughs> I texted Dan and said, Hey, where's Curly Beard at? <laughs> That's basically what he said. Greybeard's asking where you are. What do I tell him? Tell him you just call him. More. Why would you tell him anything other than what happened? <laughs> but I was confused as to why he was asking. <laughs> Watch around the pee hole that you don't catch and rip them. Oh yeah, damn it! Consistent to the stool twice on that one. Uh -huh. That's it, just scrape all the way down to the edges, clean up your edges. I use a, a squirt bottle here with room temperature water in it. I clean up my edges. He goes on the board, skin out until he dries, so that he's just damp to the touch. Then he gets flipped over, and he ends up like that one. That's the one you got on Sunday, eh? Yeah, the same spot. Was he young, uh, small male? This one. It was another male, this one? I know it's pretty frozen when you Yeah, you're... this one was a male. That's why he's got the little pee hole. Makes sense. Scraps. The meat bucket's still in the trailer? He is there. Right on. Well, at least we got some more lynx bait for lynx. Yeah. And that is just about her. Anything I miss when I put it on the board, I just clean it off with the knife, split the tail, put a bunch of tacks in it, pin it open. Bang, bang, boom, good goes in. Yep, that's it. Fish aren't that difficult. It takes a little little practice. Just about the only difficult animal to do. Wolves are cumbersome because they're big. And uh, otter. Otter's the toughest one. They're the best ones though. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what do you figure? Are you picking one of those up tomorrow or is your I hope set so. frozen? No, it's not frozen in. Maybe a little. Should be under the ice enough though. We never did catch it on camera, but I managed to get my 6x6 six six stuck right where Curly Beard's otter set is. We more like more. hung up. <laughs> I had no more forward or reverse momentum. <laughs> Cleaning up a little bit of meat. I didn't mess with the knife. I'm glad I missed with the knife because I did poke him once or twice. Just not bad in the slightest. Yeah. That's good. I'll get board ready and board him. Is this. Oh no. Is this way? Uh, fox? So yeah, that's fox. I pulled those out of the, uh, the wolf and I added borax to the. Uh, 
Ja. Starting to turn a little, eh? He's not a bad looking lynx. He's got nice spots on his belly. Yeah. That fisher, when I started skinning him, his belly was still partially frozen. Aye, aye. Yeah. Yeah, he was frozen pretty solid, actually. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Trap sitters are in the back of the trailer, and I was too lazy to go get them, so I did the old-fashioned way. <laughs> All the while thinking, I should probably just go get the trap sitters. Uh, did you get that fight on camera? <laughs> nope. I got it. Second, third, fifth, seventh try, something like that. <laughs> About two tries away from going to get the trap setters. <laughs> if I fail one more time. <laughs> so I board them and make sure everything's nice and symmetrical. For years, all I've used is just a regular old paint scraper. It's the way I was taught. I use it for for beaver. Well, anything I have to scrape. All I'm doing here is just cleaning up my edges a little bit. Anything I happen to miss with the flushing knife. turns the beef jerky the dogs come in and eat it so we're good. <laughs> this little stuff you don't have to be that fancy or fussy with it it's just a again it's all just to clean up the edges. The more meat and fat and stuff you get off them the faster they are to dry so less chance of spoilage. I'm scraping the other one. And as for the tail, we do have the uh, probably attached at one point in time. We do have the commercial tail guide. Again with a sharp knife. These guys don't really need it, but whatever, we'll demonstrate it. So you put your tail guide in. Just prevents on the last fisher. I can't believe I'm saying this. As I don't normally use this, so I just put the knife in and I cut and I go in and I cut and I go in. Well, when I cut, the tip of the knife poked through the other side, so I ended up with a split tailed fisher. So this prevents that. You put the guide in, you just hold it up, and you run your knife all the way down. Oh, Sharp knife being a key. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. I did sharpen one of these buggers. Once you get down so far, just take the tailgate, stuff it down some more, and keep going. There, see? Make a lighter on me now. And keep going. Keeps your cut nice and straight. Instead of watering all over. Now it doesn't fit in the last little bit, so this knife has a bit of a curve to it. So when I put it in, I just I don't force it. I just I bend the tail and I wiggle the knife until it goes in, and then right on up. And that's it. One split fisher tail. 
I usually take paper towel because there's usually a bit of blood in there. I give her a half assed weight down. And then I pin her open. A bit of grease here. This knife is very sharp. That's the knife I used to put a couple of nicks I did put in her. Vent holes. Speed holes makes it dry faster. Um, yeah. That's it. I have seen guys that got this fancy little rig with it right here so the bar stands up. I love it. I'm going to make one. Now I got a little bit of work to do on the back end here. For now. It's all good. I'm just gonna put one right, come on, right there. It's just the way I made my cuts. These things are a little bit fatter than me. And that's it. And I go down in every couple of inches. You can go crazy on these things. You can use uh, screening like I use on the mink tails. You can ever show the screen there. Whatever extra he had uh, from making Martin boxes, use them to split the tail open or spread the tail open once he's got it split. Which is nice. You don't need as many pins afterwards. And then I just go down every every few inches or so and pin the tail open so it has a chance to dry. I like to do these animals first. Whether it be Fisher, Martin, we don't really have a choice tonight because we have both Fisher and a Lynx to do. And uh, both of these are going to have to get flipped. I tried to get this guy done first so that when we do the Lynx, hopefully by the time the Lynx is done or before I'm ready for uh, bed anyways, I have a chance to flip this guy. The links, if I put him in the opposite corner away from the heater, he's usually good till morning. I'll flip him in the morning before I go to work. Yeah, that is pretty much it. I did manage to go a little off with the tail. He won't be totally dry, so I will fix the tail. It's just to get it pinned open to start to dry. Some of the moisture out. As for the other side, it's the easiest way to do this. It's always a bloody fight. And this, because I cut the uh, the legs off square, it usually creates an angle. So then I don't I don't overstretch them. I pull them down till there's, I don't know, it's hard to explain, till he's relaxed. So you can see he goes there. I might pull him half an inch, an inch longer, and that's where he's going to get pinned. As he dries, he'll shrink, but his fur will stay nice and thick. Keeps everything symmetrical. In otter, I, uh, in male otters, when I when I spread the legs, I go right to the uh, penis hole, for lack of a better term. And then when you board them, you can, as you're pinning it, you can you can create a very nice window. Instead of I've cut the the windows afterwards, and they always look like garbola.
here, like I say, I don't go crazy with the pins. You can, you can nip them off square, you can, this is just bare bones basic. Doing it and making it look half decent. I think this guy's probably so I can steal the belly wedge out of him. Fisher, obviously. The legs are there. Okay, I'm gonna find another belly wedge for this guy. Oh, Nelly! I should make up a few more of these because I don't think I'm gonna have one for that looks. That's it. As it, uh, we'll let her hang up and dry. And holes. It's not a, it's not a thick belly wedge. I'm not putting any pressure on the hide. You don't see any white stretch marks on it. Or this is where the trap whacked them. But, but that's it. That's, that's how I do my fishers and my Martin and my mink and. Like I said earlier on in the video, anything except for those two. Those two we tie up the back leg and we're going to hang them just because they're such a tall animal. So Curly Beard is going to tackle the, the weasel. And I'll get on the links and I bet you I'm done the links before Curly Beard is done the weasel. Well, I promise you're done the links before I'm done the weasel. <laughs> Where's that? Uh... Forgot we got the weasel. <coughs> okay, done deal. I'll get warmed up. Tackle that giant weasel. Which one? The one with the tufts on the ears? <laughs>